Ducati may be one of the best known motorcycle brands in the world, but not a lot of folks know about the unique cam technology that all Ducatis use. What is desmodromic timing and why does Ducati use it? We'll explain in this video from the MC Garage. Unless you ride a two-stroke or an e-bike, your motorcycle's engine uses poppet valves like this to control the flow of air and gas into the combustion chamber and the flow of exhaust gases out. All four-stroke engines use a cam to force this valve open, and all motorcycles use a stiff spring to return the valve to its seat. All motorcycles except Ducatis. Ducatis use desmodromic timing, called Desmo for short, and the difference is in how the valves are closed. Instead of relying on springs to push the valves back against their seats, Desmo heads have separate complementary cam lobes and forked L-shaped rocker arms that rest against collars on the valve stems and act to pull the valves closed. So, whether opening or closing, the valve's motion is positively controlled at all times and follows the cam timing exactly. In fact, the word desmodromic is a combination of the Greek words desmo, which means controlled, and dromic, which means track. So the valves are following a controlled track. Man, do I love literal language. Why does precise valve control matter? It's how you make good power, for starters, but it's also how you keep your engine from barfing its guts out the exhaust pipe. And that was actually pretty common in the 40s and 50s when race engines were starting to rev really high. The metallurgy of the day was not very good, and valve springs would break or they wouldn't return the valve to the seat fast enough, which results in a loss of power or a grenaded engine if that valve hits the piston. And obviously, that's not a good way to win a race. So, in 1956, Ducati, under the guidance of the great Fabio Taglioni, decided to sidestep the valve spring problem altogether and put a desmodromic timing system in its 125 Grand Prix bike. The system worked and kept the valves under control at high RPMs. Ducati went on to win a bunch of races. And today, every Ducati model from the entry-level Scrambler 62 on up to this Monster 1200 all the way to the million-dollar MotoGP bikes uses Desmo timing. Now, Ducati and Desmo may be synonymous, but Ducati didn't actually invent the technology. In fact, Norton implemented it on a motorcycle before Ducati, and Mercedes-Benz and other car manufacturers gave Desmo a try as well. But Ducati is the only manufacturer to bring Desmo into mass production, and it's kind of become a hallmark of the brand. Another common misconception is that there's no springs whatsoever in a Desmo head. There aren't coil stacks under each valve as on a conventional cylinder head, but there are still hairpin springs under the closing arms that help the valve seal and keep the closing collar in place. Another beneficial aspect of the desmodromic system is that less energy is wasted turning the cams, since stiff valve springs don't have to be compressed every time you want to open one of those valves. Now, when an engineer is designing a conventional cylinder head, he has to select valve springs that are stiff enough to keep the valves from floating at whatever that engine's red line is going to be. So even when that motor is just idling or turning low RPMs, the cams have to overcome springs that are designed to keep the valves from floating at 13,000 RPM or whatever it's supposed to rev out to. So with a Desmo head, the cams turn over easier and ultimately what that means is a little more power goes to the rear wheel rather than being wasted squeezing springs. But the big benefit of desmodromic timing is that it frees you from the weaknesses and limitations of valve springs. The thing is, metallurgy and technology has improved a lot. Modern spring valve engines can rev to 15,000 RPM without floating a poppet, and when was the last time you heard of a valve spring breaking? The fact of the matter is, the problem that prompted Ducati to start using Desmo in the first place, it doesn't really exist anymore. And the system has, historically, presented some problems of its own. For example, Ducatis are famous for having frequent valve service intervals. Italian bikes are more difficult and time consuming to service because they've got twice as many shims to check and change. There's a shim on the opening arm as well as on the closing arm. Plus, you've got two belts that need to be replaced and tensioned. And assuming you take your duck to a Ducati dealership, you're probably gonna pay a higher hourly rate for the work. Older Ducatis and newer heritage models that use the older air-cooled motor probably deserve the reputation for being high maintenance. But Ducati's newer liquid-cooled engines actually have service intervals on par with other manufacturers. 
Slicker synthetic motor oils, new tech Kevlar cam belts, lighter reciprocating parts, and better anti-friction coatings, among other improvements, have allowed Ducati to push the service interval out to 15,000 miles for the 1200 engines, like this monster uses, or 18,000 miles for the 1260 engine, like the one they use in the Multistrada. So while the valve service is still trickier on a Ducati, at least you don't need to do it more frequently than on most other sport bikes. In the end, the reality is that with today's technology and metallurgy, desmodromic timing doesn't have any major advantages. Yet at the same time, Desmo has fewer disadvantages than ever before, and that's thanks to the persistence of Ducati's engineers. Ducati doesn't have any real reason to use Desmo anymore, except that it wants to. It's tradition, and it's something that they're very proud of, as they should be. When they introduced Desmodromics back in 1956, it was a very innovative solution, and even today, it's still an extremely viable technology that's been proven at the highest levels of competition. Plus, in a marketplace full of spring valve engines, Desmo makes Ducati motors unique. And now you know why. That's it. Thanks for watching. And if you know anybody that rides a Ducati, feel free to share this video because they should probably know how their motor works. Also, if you've got any questions or comments, as always, leave them below. And until next time, ride safe.